Mash water, add Camden. Monitor water temperature. Add green bag and remove heat just above mash temperature. Add milk grain from grain store. Stir like crazy to break up chunks. Double check mash temperature. Add lid. Set timer for 60 minutes. Measure hops. Stir and check temperature every 15 minutes. Add heat for a few moments if needed. Remove heat when the temperature starts to rise. It will keep going. And replace the lid. Check and repeat this every 15 minutes until the mash is complete. Mash is done. Remove green bag and drain in another container. Let it drain and almost everything comes out. Let the green bag continue to drain in the other container. Move the spent green bag to another container and add the additional ore that drained out to your main brewing kettle. Save the grain that is now spent for your dogs. Wash the grain bag and store for later use. Check the pre-boil specific gravity before adding water. Make sure the mash went like you thought it should. Shooting for 1.045. This is a little strong but we can always dilute it later. It's safe to add the pre-boil water now. Add water to get to the pre-boil amount. Remember to err on the side of making it a little bit strong as you can always add some water after the boil. Add heat and wait for it to boil. Now that it has a rolling boil, time to add the 60 minute hop addition. This is for bittering. Set timer for 60 minutes and start. Don't fear the foam. This also sanitizes out the racket wand or siphon in my case. With the star sand get in all the nooks and crannies. Turn the star sand back to the bucket. Some people use a sprayer. I like this method. Add the aroma and flavor hops towards the end of the boil. And also optionally a whirl flock tab. Sanitize the workspace. When the boil is done, remove from heat chill as fast as possible to stop isomerization. It's important to get the temperature below 160 as soon as possible so that your IBUs do not change. A simple ice bath in the sink has dropped the temperature to 150 in less than two minutes. With the temperature below 165, after the boil, things need to be kept sanitary as microbes can grow. Continue to exchange water and cool until you reach the pitching temperature. I like to pitch below 80 degrees. Ensure that the things that touch the wart stay on the sanitized surface only. Check the original gravity with sanitized implements. This will need a moment to cool. I've got a little bit too much sugar to water here, so I'm going to add some water to get to 1.045. This is about what I expected, given that I went a little lower than two and a half gallons. Remember, you can always add a little water to hit your target original gravity. Time to transfer to the fermenter. Transfer to the carboy. Don't fear the foam. 
This will also oxygenate the wort. Modern dry yeast is as good as liquid yeast and much easier to use, but it doesn't have all of the varieties. 80 degrees, and by the time the yeast rehydrates, it will be in the upper 60s. I'm going to pitch half a packet and measure to make sure that's what I do. Pitching the yeast. The scale says I'm down five grams, which is basically half of this packet, which is what I need for a pro pitch rate. Put the rest in the fridge for another batch. People doing five gallon batches probably throw the whole thing in there. The yeast is dropping and rehydrating. The trube is starting to form. Place the bung and airlock on the carboy. This is filled with star sand, so in case it sucks some back in, it won't contaminate the warp. In about 12 hours, we'll see some activity, maybe even sooner. Time to wrap it with a towel to keep the light out. In the basement, this will reach mid-60s, maybe upper 60s. In about a week, we'll have beer that is ready to transfer and rack into bottles and carbonate. Clean up after yourself if you don't want to be murdered by your wife. Bye.